In today's CCTV America Inside, a find that's being called historic, not to mention prehistoric. It happened in a park in the U.S. state of Utah back in 2009. Believe it or not, a high school student found what scientists are calling a huge discovery. Kevin Terrace spotted the youngest and most complete fossil skeleton of an iconic dinosaur species. Kevin's find was airlifted out of the area and is now getting the royal treatment in another state. Kevin is a college student now at Montana State University. We have tracked him down for his first television interview. We will talk exclusively with him in just a minute. But first, we want to learn more about Kevin's discovery and its significance to the scientific community, not to mention the fact that it's pretty darn cool. Yekenda McGahee takes a closer look. The western U.S. is a really great place to find fossils. Those petrified remains of ancient beasts who roamed this land over 150 million years ago. We have a lot of mountains, a lot of deserts that have exposed rocks, and a lot of those rocks are the right age of rocks to find fossil dinosaurs. Funny he mentions age, because that's what makes this story so significant. Some would say historic. No, not just the age of the rare fossil found. This is the skull of the baby Parasaurolophus. But also the age of the fossil finder. And at the Raymond Alf Museum of Paleontology in Southern California, they have a philosophy. No one's too young to find something millions of years old. This is the only nationally accredited museum in the world that's on a high school campus. The museum has about 150,000 specimens. And they have a paleontology program that immerses students in the study of dinosaurs, from examining fossils to prospecting them. It's called prospect. There are in places ways. like Escalante National Monument in Utah. We take these students out there, and because it's, you know, it's not been very well searched before, you can find some really cool stuff. And boy, did they ever. While prospecting in 2009, a protruding piece of something caught the curious eye of 17-year-old student Kevin Terrace. I looked at it, and I didn't think it was really anything that significant. It looked almost like the end of a rib fragment. And while it looked insignificant, Dr. Andrew Fark knows looks can deceive. And I pick it up, and I turn it over, and there's a dinosaur skull staring back at me. So on one side of the rock, we have the skull. On the other side of the rock, we have the toes. That means there's a whole dinosaur in between. Not just a complete dinosaur skeleton, Elvis. but a rare one that would take an entire year to dig up and airlift out. This was an absolutely unique find. No one has ever found a baby skeleton of this kind of dinosaur. And no one has ever found a skeleton, a adult or baby, of this dinosaur, Parasaurolophus, as complete as this one. Paleontologists say the duck-billed Parasaurolophus walked the earth about 75 million years ago. And though they say it's a close relative of the bird, it has a horn that closely resembles a ram. But instead of a means of defense, experts say it was used as a method of communication. The hollow-like horn emitting a trombone-like noise. That sounds a little something like this. Or this. But scientists say this dinosaur, known as Baby Joe, likely couldn't blow his undeveloped horn. Experts say Joe was just an infant, a young male with so much life to live. Seems the same could be said for the California teenager who's made a scientific contribution far beyond his youth, surpassing the accomplishments of far more experienced paleontologists. Yakenda McGahee, CCTV, Claremont, California. And as promised, joining us exclusively right now from his college campus in the U.S. state of Montana is Kevin Terrace. Kevin, welcome to the show. It's been four years since you made this incredible discovery. And now here you are talking to the world. What has it been like for you? Oh, it's been very exciting. I've always um, had a passion for paleo and going out on these digs and just finding this and just knowing how much it contributed to the scientific community. It's staggering. Take me back to that day four years ago. You were doing some sort of school project in Utah. What caught your eye and what happened? Well, uh, we were just wrapping up our, our dig in Utah and our, it was our second to last day, so we were trying to get our, um, a little bit of final prospecting, looking for fossils in before we had to close up all of our sites. And um, we were just hiking up along this ridge 
I just saw a conglomerate, a big piece of rock protruding out from the ground and just decided to take a quick look under it and saw a bit of bone sticking out. Then we, after walking over to the other side, we found the skull. So we determined that the whole skeleton must be in there somewhere. So it's very exciting. At what point did you realize during all of this that your discovery was a big deal? Well, um, I guess when we first uh, initially found it, um, my teacher, Dr. Parkey, and I walked over and we uh, flipped over a loose bit of rock. And after we flipped that over and found the skull, um, that's kind of when we realized it was kind of important. Uh, Dr. Parkey's reaction alone spoke volumes about how exciting this was. But you didn't know exactly what it was at that moment, right? I mean, you just knew that you had uh, several pieces, possibly something, but you didn't realize at that point what a major discovery it was. Oh, n not initially. We just knew that uh, whenever you find a skull, um, period, it's, it's exciting initially. And then once more information came in and we were able to determine what it was, it, it just added to the excitement and the um, just the fascination and everything with it. Is this something that you've always been interested in as long as you can remember? Or is this something that you became interested in later on as a teenager? Oh, I've always had an interest um, ever since I was a little kid. And it's a running joke along the community that everybody as a kid loves dinosaurs. And those who continue to study them just never grow up. <laughs> So that being said, Kevin, what is next for you? You're in college now. What are you studying, and what do you hope to be when you grow up, if you grow up, so to speak? <laughs> well, um, I'm, I'm currently studying paleontology, so I, I really do want to continue along those lines and uh, hopefully get into grad school where I can further my interests. Kevin Terrace, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we appreciate your time. Thanks for having me. Now, the other interesting part of this story is how fascinated the world is with dinosaurs. It translates into big business. Consider this. The movie Jurassic Park, about a wildlife park of cloned dinosaurs, has grossed more than $1 billion since its release in 1993. Most of that money has been earned overseas. The movie only cost $63 million to make. It is the number one dinosaur movie of all time. But at least one movie studio is working right now to try to get a piece of that pie. Walt Disney's Pixar is working on a movie called The Good Dinosaur. The movie is about a 70-foot tall dinosaur that befriends a boy. It was originally set for release next year, but that's been pushed back to 2015. But it's not just movies. There are even dinosaur theme parks. One of the most well-known is actually a chain called Dinosaur World. It has locations in three U.S. states, all of them with a dinosaur theme. Mike, hard to believe that something that roamed the Earth tens of millions of years ago is still having an impact today.